Tom, uh, I've been obsessed with the mind-body problem, the classic uh, question of how does our mental activity relate to our physical body or brain uh, for all of my intellectual life. Um, and I've recently been, been uh, focusing on the arts, and I'm wondering how the arts might affect our understanding of the classic mind-body problem. Uh, and I, I would start by asking you, because of your work in, in cognitive science so, so um, uh, interestingly and so originally, that can the arts ex uh, elucidate the nature of our mentality so we understand mind better? Yeah, I think so. I, I definitely think that the arts can uh, uh, elucidate about mind as well as body. I think that the, uh, the arts can, can teach us uh, how they connected with each other. You know, now maybe some arts are more powerful than others to do this, you know. Maybe you need, uh, maybe you need films to do this. I don't know. Well, paintings are amazing in a way. Paintings, even though someone called them one-liners, mm -hmm. you know, paintings can show us uh, all kinds of things about our, our minds, uh, just uh, on so many different levels. Uh, paintings can trick us into mm -hmm. seeing uh, dimensions mm -hmm. that, in fact, it's a two-dimensional surface, and yet we can see mm -hmm. more than... Uh, dimensions. So th that's a cognitive process. Sure. And so art is teaching us uh, that uh, it's showing us something about cognition. Does, mm. does that make it sense sure, to you at sure, all? Sure, of course, of course. How, how broadly can that occur? What, what are the characteristics of art that can, that can enrich our understanding of, of mind? Uh, cognition is one. Uh, uh, what yeah. are some other categories? Emotion, uh, affect, uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. The uh, I think that uh, it might at least uh, teach us what kinds of things can and cannot evoke our emotions. I think that the emotions play a very, very important part. Mm. And very, very often, as you know, the cognitive people ignore the emotions. They're mm -hmm. no, no longer doing that. Yeah. But for a long time, it was all about structure, form. Mm. and very little about the emotions. Then, of course, the whole notion of embodiment came along. Mm. And with embodiment, you know, you begin to focus upon exactly how knowledge resides in the body itself. Mm. Now, here is a beautiful example of the body-mind problem. <laughs> when, when you begin to realize that the body contains knowledge, <laughs> you know? It's not as if the brain somehow projects the knowledge mm -hmm. out there. The body is, itself contains the knowledge. It's a, the a notion of embodiment is, a, it's like incarnation. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the, the notion today is that you really can't understand uh, cognition uh, uh, all by itself in an isolated way, that you have to understand embodied cognition. Because right. it's so uh, it, it's so embedded within the concept of the you know certainly as as uh, sentient creatures that w if we were disembodied our minds would not be the same thing. That's right. Yes. So um, if if you imagined a world that had no art, yeah. uh, how would our understanding of mind be impoverished? Oh wow. Uh, uh, it's it's almost impossible for me to imagine a world without art. But yeah, we would, we have to, one of the jobs of the imagination is to to, to do heavy work. Right, right. <laughs> and one job of the imagination is to imagine a world without something or other. Yeah. And uh, a world without art would be an impoverished improv, impoverished place because you'd have none of the uh, none of the representations. Uh, the none of the representations that we need for so much just to, to express ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I think that that would be a tragedy. It would be a tragedy, but, but by, by studying the absence of things, we then learn more about how things work when they're there. That's right. And that's uh, why and, it's and an exercise. Power, yeah, and the, the power, and the power of it, yes. exactly. So if you think of a world without art, uh, you're, you, you express shock because yeah. that's a, <laughs> it's a shockingly impoverished world. 
And so that gives us a feeling of the power of art to define mentality. By the way, I just finished a painting the other day called A World Without Ice. Oh, okay. Beautiful, but deadly. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, it was a response to the climate change, yeah. uh, issues about climate change. Mm. But I began to say, you know, I, I have an obligation to, to, to show something about mm. this. <laughs> it's a, a very emotional reaction. Well, that's, that's, that's so good. I had all reds and greens <laughs> and, you know, yellows uh, and shapes uh, like that, you know. The world were, and it ended up very beautiful. But the subject matter is yeah. this, there's no ice left. Yeah. You know, everything is very, very hot. Yeah. In fact, so hot that, you know, yeah. we can't survive in that kind of... Yeah, yeah so, so that, uh, that imagination that you have shows an, an enrichment of, 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 of your thinking of a, a counterfactual situation. Absolutely. That, that, that you're imagining something that doesn't exist. Beautiful, beautiful, that's yeah. exactly... Yeah. And so that, that expands the mentality. It allows you to yes. project those things which are even impossible things. That's right. And, and your, yours is unfortunately possible, <laughs> but, the, but it shows the, the power of imagination. Right. So let's go to then the, se the second step. And the second yes. step says that, it, it, that the, cl the classic question in, in the mind-body problem from an explanatory point of view is, do you need something beyond the physical, as we understand the physical today, to explain the mind? Can the, or in reverse, can the mind be 100% explained eventually by the physical brain? And can the arts uh, 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 make a contribution to that critical um, um, disjuncture? No. It, uh, I, I think that you will always need uh, various levels of explanation. I don't think that you can simply uh, settle for the physical or just the brain itself. I think there's what they call bottom-up, uh, explanations and mm. top-down explanations. Mm. And I think the top-down explanations start with mental facts and end up with physical facts, mm. whereas bottom starts with physical facts and ends up as mental facts. But are they the same? No, they are not the same. Mm. I, I, I refuse to think that they are the same. I think that they are. Now, they are philosophers who argue that they no, are of course, the same. Of course. And I disagree with them. And do you think the arts support your position more than theirs? Oh, yes. I think the arts are definitely on my side. 